Hi guys, it's MTG here, and I've been using the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus a lot since its release. And a question that I get a lot is, but is it better than the iPhone X? So in this video, I'll be looking at them head to head and seeing how the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus compares to the iPhone X. In this video, I'll be comparing them in six different categories, and in the end, I'll tell you my pick and I'll give my overall recommendations. Hopefully I'll help you out if you happen to be stuck in between the two. Let's get right into it. The first category that I'll go over is design and specifications. The iPhone X has a design that has actually grown on me with time. It has glass on both the front and the back and has a stainless steel frame. The screen on the X is a 5.8 inch OLED display with the infamous notch and has a resolution of 2436 by 1125. The glass was advertised by Apple as the most durable glass ever put on a smartphone, but it's still glass and as expected, it still breaks easily and it costs a lot to repair. But if you've ever held the iPhone X, you'll understand when I say the phone feels very premium. Powering the phone is Apple's new A11 Bionic chip that is still currently the most powerful chip put on a smartphone. It has 3GB of RAM and either 64 or 256GB of storage. On the other hand, the S9s look a lot like the S8s from last year. But I, as along with a lot of other tech reviewers, love the design of the S8s, so I also love the design of the S9 and S9 Plus. It has Corning's Gorilla Glass 5 on both the front and the back, and has an aluminum frame. The screen on the S9 Plus is a 6.2 inch AMOLED panel with a QHD Plus resolution of 1440 by 2960. The phone feels great and also very premium. And coming from phones like the Note 8 and Pixel 2 XL, I'll say the S9 Plus is also the most comfortable tablet sized phone to hold. Powering the phone is either the OctaCore Snapdragon 845 chipset or Samsung's Exynos 9810 Octa. It has 6GB of RAM, and based on where you live, may or may not have storage options beyond 64GB. Both phones are inarguably two of the best designed phones to date, and both phones also use the most powerful chipsets available for their respective operating systems. Your design preference will very well come down to whether you love or hate the notch, and whether you want the bigger phone or not. The next category that I want to talk about is battery. The S9 Plus is equipped with a 3500mAh battery, whereas the iPhone X is equipped with a 2716mAh battery. Although the iPhone X has a much smaller battery capacity, Apple has always done a pretty good job of optimizing their phones, and especially after a few software updates, the iPhone X doesn't struggle getting through the day on most days. Of course on heavy usage days, I will have to charge it by the end of the day. But on normal days, the iPhone X does just fine making it to the end of the day. The S9 Plus actually performed a lot better than I had even expected. The Note 8 wasn't too great in terms of battery life, but the S9 Plus can make it to the end of the day even on some heavy usage days. I have had to charge it when I've been staying up past, say, 2am, but other than that, the battery life has been great. Also, both phones are fast wireless charging compatible, which is always a nice thing to have, and both are fast charging compatible also. But there's a catch with the iPhone X that I'll get into when I talk about price. So overall, the S9 Plus does have the slightly better battery life, but still both of them have some of the best battery lives right now. Now I'm going to go and get into both phones' dual camera systems. I already have a video out comparing both of them in depth in various lighting conditions, and I also looked at the video quality and audio quality of both. So definitely check that video out if you want to see more shots. Both phones are equipped with dual 12 megapixel camera systems, where one is a wide angle lens and the other is a telephoto lens that allows for two times optical zoom and depth effect pictures. The similarities don't stop there. Both phones can record 4K at up to 60 frames per second, and both phones also have optical image stabilization on both of their cameras. While still acknowledging the fact that the Pixel 2 XL still has the best portrait mode abilities, the iPhone X and the S9 Plus are in my opinion the two most well-rounded cameras on a smartphone right now. When there's good lighting, both phones take near flawless images with great HDR capabilities. In darker scenarios, the S9 Plus does excel, however, because it is able to automatically switch to an f1.5 aperture to let in more light. Overall, the iPhone X will tend to shoot the warmer image, whereas the S9 Plus will shoot a slightly cooler image. Again, check out my in-depth camera comparisons to see more test shots. The two phones' cameras have their strengths and their weaknesses, so you'll have to think about what scenarios you're more likely to shoot in and see how the phones compare in those specific scenarios. Then you'd be able to pick the phones' cameras that you like better. 
Apple and Samsung took very different approaches when it comes to extra features. Apple has always tried to keep things simple with their phones, whereas Samsung has always tried to include all of the newest features. That being said, the iPhone X does have a couple cool extra features. First off, Face ID is not a gimmick. The iPhone X can make a 3D map of your face, needs your attention to unlock, and uses an infrared camera. This makes for a biometric unlock method that is quick, easy to use, and works in just about every scenario. The S9 Plus has a pretty good competitor with its intelligence scan. It pretty much instantly toggles between using either just 2D facial recognition, just iris scanning, or a combination of the two. It's for a biometric unlock method that is quick, works in just about every scenario, but admittedly isn't as secure as Apple's Face ID, at least the facial recognition aspect of it. But the S9 Plus has a fingerprint sensor in a very convenient place on its back, as opposed to no fingerprint sensor at all on the iPhone X. Both phones utilize their earpieces in order to have stereo speakers. This means you can hold the phone in natural positions and still not completely muffle the audio. The S9 Plus gets a little louder than the iPhone X, but the iPhone X has a clearer, less tinny sound than the S9. But of course, the iPhone X does not have a headphone jack, whereas the S9 Plus remains one of the few flagships to keep it. There is a slight difference in their water and dust resistance ratings, with the iPhone X rated at IP67 and the S9 Plus rated at IP68. This means that the S9 Plus could survive being in water for 30 minutes at a depth of 1.5 meters, as opposed to the iPhone X, which can only survive at a depth of 1 meter for the same time span. And whether you love virtual assistants or hate them, the X and S9 have dedicated Siri and Bixby buttons, which allow for easy but also accidental activations. I should also note that the S9 Plus has a micro SD card for easy storage expansion, whereas the iPhone X's storage cannot be expanded. A phone can be the best designed phone in the world, but if it stutters, it doesn't really mean anything. So when I compare two phones, I always want to look at overall software and usability. Samsung has always received criticism for how clunky its skins have been, and recently, this has not been the case at all. The Snapdragon 845, coupled with 6GB of RAM, allows the phone to be pixel smooth in navigating between menus and apps, while still packing a lot of those Samsung features and the large amount of RAM allows the phone to multitask effortlessly and keep many apps open at a time. The iPhone X has only 3GB of RAM, which does hurt its ability to keep a lot of apps open, but it more than makes up for it with the A11 Bionic chip. The chip allows the phone to open apps very quickly, and also allows users to do things like gesture between apps that are already open instantly iOS 11 is the much simpler OS that just wants to get the job done and nothing more. And although it is not very customizable, it does allow you to utilize the perks of being in the Apple ecosystem with things such as iMessage, FaceTime, and AirDrop. The added convenience of being in the ecosystem means a lot to people, and rightfully so. Android Oreo won't let you be in the Apple ecosystem, but will allow you to customize your device to however you'd like with launchers, skins, and widgets. It has also become cleaner over the years to the point where if you want it to stay simple, you can as well. As you know, when I compare two phones, I don't simply look at which phone costs more than the other. I look at bang for your buck. That is, what are you getting for the money? I'm not going to say that the iPhone X is insanely overpriced because some people truly value the convenience of being in the Apple ecosystem, and as a result, continue to purchase iPhones regardless of price. I have a MacBook Pro and an iPad Pro, so I love and use Apple products all the time. But I still don't understand why Apple charged $1,000 for an iPhone X base model. The S9 Plus retails for $840, which is already $160 less than the iPhone X. But with the S9 Plus, you also get premium wired earphones, which separately would cost $100. You also even get an included fast charging wall adapter in order to even use the fast charging capabilities of the iPhone X, you have to buy almost $80 worth of extra accessories. Although some of these other categories are subjective and very close, the iPhone X does not provide nearly as much bang for your buck as the S9 Plus provides. In the end, it can't be denied that both of these phones are awesome. They have the two best displays on the market, stereo speakers, great cameras, and so much more. Everything is close enough where I'd say it really comes down to one thing. And that's whether or not you feel like you really need to stay in the Apple ecosystem. Operating systems and ecosystems aside, the S9 Plus has the better battery life, a fingerprint sensor, no notch, a variable aperture, an included fast charger, 
a headphone jack, and expandable storage, among other things. All of this packaged into a phone that is $160 less than the iPhone X. Again, I'm not denying that the iPhone X is not a fantastic device because I use it on a daily basis. And I really appreciate what Apple has done here. But I'm being honest in that I think that the S9 Plus is the more complete package. I know the iPhone X is still worth it to millions of people. Because it's the most innovative iPhone to date and being in the Apple ecosystem is really that convenient. Let me know in the comment section what you think. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.